This is talk time. Nigeria is facing one of its worst economic situations, no doubt. And the price of oil, a major export, is at a record low. There is huge pressure on the Naira and businesses are laying off staff. And added to this are foreign reserves that have fallen to their lowest level in a decade. Now, how best to revive the economy is what we're looking at uh, this morning. And, of course, this will be against the backdrop of the... Uh, national Economic Conference that's been called for. Now, joining me from Abuja is a former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, Obadiah Melafia. Good morning to you. It's good to uh, have you join us again on the show. Uh, well, let's even begin with the Economic Conference good that was... Yes, uh, the Economic Conference that has been uh, suggested and, uh, well, thankfully or otherwise, it depends on how you see it, uh, President Buhari uh, has listened and the conference is coming up March 10 and 11. Um, would you say that this uh, conference is long overdue? Well, I think it's a very important initiative. And I recall that uh, Professor Wale Shainka had raised the issue earlier and I'm happy that the government has deemed it fit to hold such a conference. I believe it will have a very important impact. All right, um, let's even uh, look at all the things, the indices that, or the factors that actually brought Nigeria to where it is. Um, is it possible that, you know, uh, take for example, the, um, the oil price that, you know, took a nose dive from all the way from $114 as of June last year uh, to below $30 right now as we speak. Would we have or could we have or should we have been as vulnerable as we are right now if we had put the right measures in place uh, before the downturn in the oil price of oil? Well, I, I, you have, in fact, you, you, the, rest, the, the answer is in the question you have raised itself. Definitely we should have done that a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are countries that did that over many years and have been able to cushion the effects very, very well. I'm talking about countries as UAE, uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Over more than 10 years ago, they put together a plan for a structural diversification of the economy away from dependence on oil. No way did that a long time ago. They had one of the best, they have one of the best sovereign wealth funds. It's worth over $700 billion today. So they're not likely to feel the impact. I mean, countries as far apart as uh, Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of them did that. Uh, we, we have uh, just woken up from a deep slumber, but I think better late than never. Are things as bad as we think, or are, are we just um, really uh, panicking? Is this economy, like I've heard some experts say that, you know, this economy is strong enough to withstand uh, some of this pressure, that it will bounce back uh, very soon. And how likely that is going to be is a real question. Well, um, do you want a political answer or a technical answer? All of the above. <laughs> well, the, the political answer is that there's nothing to worry about. Um, and and uh, from a political point of view, and, and I stand on the authority of great figures like uh, Theodore Roosevelt in the United States, uh, in, in the 30s, I mean, Franklin Roosevelt in the 30s, you are not to panic, and the only thing, the only thing to fear is fear itself. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with uh, political answers. But uh, from a technical level, the situation is serious. Uh, revenues are collapsing. We've lost over 70% of our public revenues over the last one year alone. We've had no contingency plans. As far as I know, there is no uh, blueprint for accelerated transformation of the economy and the diversification of the economy. There's no such blueprint. Um, the government says it's an economic team in place, but Nigerians want to see a war room, not just uh, armchair uh, policy analysts. We want to see a war room on this economy. Uh, it is a very serious matter. 
we have to buckle up and we have to treat it like a war that our people are faced with. Uh, this is the seriousness with which we need to move in transforming the Nigerian economy over the last couple of years. Otherwise, our problems will be compounded. We have a big challenge of nationhood. We have a big challenge of building a national consensus for national transformation. And if, if the economy gets worse, the crisis of our nationhood will become ever deeper. And many will even begin to question the viability of the Nigerian state, which, uh, God forbid, I don't question it. I believe in Nigeria. The question of uh, nationhood, is, is it possible that this may just be at the root of the problems that we have as a nation, you know, and the, the economic downturn and all of the other socioeconomic, uh, you know, challenges that we have are only a reflection of the main, the real question here, which is, you know, uh, the, the, our nationhood, uh, where we have not been able to define exactly what the national ethos is or you know what exactly the vision is is that really what the problem is here well i think i think you're very right it is a it is not the entire problem but it is a huge chunk of the problem countries that made huge progress over the last generation countries like singapore countries like malaysia countries like Mexico, countries like Chile, all of them emerging economies, including not talk of China and India, they first had to agree a national consensus on the way forward. In India, whether you are a Muslim or whether you are a Hindu or a Christian or a Sikh, you are an Indian first and they have a sense of national purpose. Now, this is extremely important so that when you are outlining a vision of the economy, nobody feels that they are not part of it. You know, the people who are now advocating for Biafra feel that they have been marginalized, they've been neglected. Not to talk about people who have a deep-seated feeling of being Odudua first, uh, and people who think they are Arewa first. If we begin to think that we are Nigerians first, and we look at the situation of this economy properly, we can begin to identify regions with their comparative advantage. The North and the Middle Belt is easily the breadbasket of this country. What about agriculture, agribusiness, and value chain industries? The Ogun Lagos axis is very strong in manufacturing as well as in finance. Why not make it an industrial hub? Not to talk of Aba or Nietzsche. These are massive areas of creativity and innovation in technology, industry. You know, we can map out the country like that without anybody feeling that there are hidden agendas. We need to love our country and love our people. And it, but it must be tough love. Love that requires sacrifice. Love that requires taking tough decisions in the overall interest of the country. So, well, we are coming to this realization rather late, but we have to take bold and concrete action. Would you be on the same page then with those who say, look, it is time for Nigeria to go back to the uh, pre-60s uh, regional kind of um, economy uh, that puts Nigeria on the world map as far as agriculture and all the other things, you know, the, the, the comparative advantage that you talk about, you know, which uh, these regions actually had and actually harnessed. Should we be looking at going back to pre-60s? Well, you know, this uh, issue has been raised. Well, you know, this uh, issue has been raised by none other than uh, the great uh, Chief Emeka Eleazar, uh, 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 the former uh, Anyauku, I mean, uh, Eleazar Anyauku, the former Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. He called for returning to the regional system that we, we had. Uh, but he says it should not be based on the six geopolitical zones. 
Uh, well, I think he, he has a point, and there, are, there, there is quite some substantial following for what he is saying. He is a true Nigerian uh, uh, and a man of great wisdom uh, and, 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 and knowledge. Uh, and uh, whatever he says, we must listen carefully. Don't forget that he was actually offered the presidency uh, in 1999. He declined. He didn't want it. He would have been the first post-war Igbo president in this country, but he just felt he didn't want it. And so I respect such a man. And what he says, we must listen to it very carefully. Uh, but we should also be careful not to repeat the mistakes, because there were mistakes in the 1960s. Uh, mistakes with the federal structure itself. It was a bit lopsided, and it led to deep-seated fears of regional domination, particularly by the North. Uh, these are issues that we need to also look into. Uh, uh, I'm from the North myself, but I don't want any section of this country to dominate any other section. We need a true federalism that respects every single community in this country so that we can move forward together. And being able to achieve this balancing act seems to be, you know, what the missing link is or where the challenge is. How, you know, let's uh, put in some kind of um, uh, counsel for this government. Uh, what kind of balancing act would you like to see? You know, would you advise this government to put in place so that um, uh, the economy, uh, you know, by default will benefit from, you know, what we're talking about? Well, I mean, uh, balancing within the current system means giving all Nigerians a sense and a feeling of identification with the government. Uh, the spirit of federalism requires that once the government has won the elections, and the Americans now, as you know, with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, they are fighting very bitterly. It's a highly contested election. But once somebody is made Mr. President. You know, he's given that salute, and his constituency is not just his party, his constituency is his country first. So we need that spirit of identifying with all of Nigerians and bringing everybody on board, uh, representation and fairness, uh, so that nobody feels let, left out. Uh, and we need that sort of balancing. But it should not be balancing for the sake of balancing. It is, should be balancing for the sake of recognizing excellence, recognizing merit, and uh, building a consensus that will enable this country to move forward. And let me just put it just for the records that, look, I feel it deeply within me that this country, this beloved country of ours, is more blessed than most countries that I know of. And I've traveled through all the five continents of the world. I've looked at rural projects in Asia, in Africa, and so on and so forth. And I can tell you that Nigeria is blessed beyond words. Uh, we need greater wisdom. We need greater courage in mapping out a true vision that will make this country live up to its promise of greatness. And I believe that for Nigeria, the best is yet to be. Many people who uh, you know, believe exactly as you do that Nigeria is a blessed country. But how is it then that we are so blessed and yet so poor? Uh, we don't have a voice in the global community and all of that. I recall when uh, uh, President Clinton, former U.S. president, was in Nigeria, and he said it is not what is under the ground that is very important, but what is above it, talking about the human um, capital. Have we, you know, uh, discarded the importance or the significance of human capital to our own detriment? And is this playing out in, in what we see now, uh, whether we're talking about the economy or, you know, social political life and all of that? With all respect, President Clinton is not quite right. It is not a binary issue. It is an integral issue. What is on the ground is important. What is above the ground is equally important. We need to synergize the two in order to, to get the progress that we need. Uh, we have been poor, I think, for very obvious reasons. 
the political economy model that we have had over so many years, generation, whole generation in fact, is based on simply collecting oil rent, sitting every month through the FAC and, and sharing it between the federal government, the state governments and, and uh, the local governments. It is astonishing because you see a small country like, like uh, Botswana, when they discovered diamonds in the early 70s, this, Botswana was a desperately poor agrarian country with nothing but cows and desert. When they discovered diamonds, they suddenly became a very wealthy nation. But the first president, Sasereta Kama, decreed that no single dollar from diamonds shall be used for consumption. That is just consuming. It shall be used only for infrastructures and for projects that will yield future income. To, today, Botswana is, is a, is a, is a high-income African country, well-governed. It's a prosperous democracy. They still have their challenges, but they've done extremely well. We believed only in consumption. Nobody, nobody believed in building for, the, for tomorrow. And leadership became a contest between the worst among us. Uh, and those who, who had talents were so scared of the system that they, they moved away. Some of them became poets, some of them became uh, writers in obscure corners, and so on. So, so that the, the wrong choice of political economy, that is where we are poor. And of course, corruption took over, and then corruption took over, and then, of course, you know where we are. But but the, we, we need to move forward from that. I think that the current government, which came uh, to power with a lot of moral capital, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is very determined to weed out corruption and to put in place a robust system that will help take Nigeria forward. We should support this government, we should support this president, where they are right, where they are doing the wrong thing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and where they do, where, uh, where, they do, where, where they do the wrong things, we should not, of course, uh, be shy of being critical. Mm. Uh, this is the only way to, to demonstrate tough love for our country. Mm -hmm. And speaking of moral capital uh, that this uh, president has, um, a, a number of world leaders have been coming to Nigeria, and uh, of course the president himself has done a lot of traveling, uh, you know, where all kinds of bilateral agreements are being signed. Uh, recall the, the Turkish uh, president who was in Nigeria recently, uh, Tayyip Erdogan, and uh, he has said that, you know, his country will invest, uh, you know, um, strongly in Nigeria. Uh, what are those things that we need to put on ground to make sure that uh, this uh, foreign direct investment that we're uh, hoping for uh, will come in and, you know, and help turn around uh, this economy? Well, you know, that one is very straightforward. I, I, I was very pleased about the visit by, by the president of Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, he has done extremely well uh, for Turkey even though some people have criticized him of being a little bit dictatorial. Mm. But I'm sorry, for a country to move forward, sometimes you have to be very tough. You have to be very firm mm. in order to get a country to move. And, and uh, Turkey has opened up the economy. They have welcomed investors. They support huge uh, industrial enterprises. They have a highly innovative economy. And, uh, you know, and some of the people are extremely successful. And we should open our arms to, to directify investment from Turkey, from UAE, from the rest of the emerging world, mm -hmm. India, uh, 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 and the rest of it. And, um, but we should be careful also that people should bring to this country advanced technology, not backward technology not dumping of inferior goods on this country. Nigeria is not an inferior country. Nigeria is a superior country. So we need superior technology, not inferior technology, and the dumping mm. of useless products. Absolutely. And of course, I mean, you, you can't uh, deny the fact that every country wants to protect the interests of its own uh, people. Uh, so I, I guess the onus will lie on, you know, Nigerians themselves 
to ensure that these inferior uh, things that you talk about don't come in. But let me go back to the issue you, you talked about earlier. I know you have said on this program a number of times that this president doesn't seem to have a clear-cut economic uh, blueprint or policy. Um, are, are you saying, I mean, talking about the war room, are, are you saying that uh, a minister of finance that we have on ground, uh, minister for power, uh, you know, works and infrastructure and all of that, transportation, and all these, uh, you know, people, Minister for Budget and Planning, are, th are these people not enough to actually uh, be the engine room of this war room to turn this economy around? Look, let me make it clear. They're, they're really very impressive people. Mm -hmm. they're, they're patriots. Uh, the Minister of Finance is uh, somebody I, I admire and respect. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, she's a very experienced person. She's qualified. Mm -hmm. uh, I have good, great respect for uh, the, the person of budgeting uh, in the budget department. She's a very outstanding jurist and uh, very highly experienced. And of course, not to talk about uh, former Governor Fashola, uh, who is a a, a trinity of powers, you know, in the mm -hmm. ministry is heading. And, uh, you know, he's a very outstanding person, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. and, but I worry that, you know, we don't have an economic blueprint. And I don't think it is good enough to say that, well, like the British Constitution, yes. our, bl our blueprint is in the heart and minds of, the, the, of those ministers and leaders. No, we need a concrete economic blueprint based on sound uh, economic and scientific principles that will guide the transformation of this country and that will be a rallying point for everybody in this country uh, uh, so that we can hold ourselves accountable for the targets and the milestones that we have promised the Nigerian people that we are going to meet. And also it will have greater legitimacy for the programs and the actionable uh, projects that the government wants to do. So that everybody is aware of what is needed and all hands, as the military would use, would say in that cliched and hackneyed expression, mm -hmm. on deck. All hands will be on deck regarding where Nigeria should be going and where the economy should be going. Uh, it is not business as usual, mm -hmm. far from it. These are extraordinary terms, times, mm -hmm. and they call for extraordinary uh, leadership. 